Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toaster Bros. And today we have a little story for you. Imagine it's 2012. Matt and I are in eighth grade. We're just some young YouTube scrubs trying to make it and we're ready to build our first gaming PCs. And what we're gonna be doing today is rebuying all those parts on eBay and putting them together just to, you know, make things a little bit interesting and see exactly how well these PCs perform and take a trip down memory lane to see, well, what was it like when we were gaming back in 2012, making multiple YouTube channels, failing multiple YouTube channels, and ultimately getting here with Toasty Bros. But before I do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. With Windows 10, it is so easy just to go onto the website using the link in the description down below and then go to the Windows 10, click buy it now, add code TB20, then go to the checkout, put in your payment info and then boom, you will get within a few seconds or a few minutes an activation code that you will go into Windows 10, put in the activation code and it is fully legit. It will work out of the box and you will have a fully activated Windows 10 license. We use GVG Mall for all the PCs we built here at the Toasty Bros and so should you. So definitely check the link in the description down below and use code TB20 to save money on checkouts. So back in 2012, Matt and I didn't know a ton about gaming PCs. We're probably like a lot of the people that are watching this video where we just wanted to get into it and we didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. So we didn't really know about optimization. We didn't know about deal hunting. So you're probably going to find these builds to be pretty funny, pretty hilarious, but that's part of the fun here, isn't it? And we tried our best to find exactly the same parts that we had. And I think we got pretty accurate. There might be some differences in why of power supplies or stuff like that. But for the most part, these are what our original builds were back in the day, and we're gonna show you exactly what we got. We haven't really opened a lot of this, so we don't know exactly what everything is or if we got all the right stuff. But firstly, I think I ordered an AM3 cooler separate, and oh, that looks like it still has the OEM thermal paste it on does. It's kind of dirty, but it'll probably work. But this is one that would have came with like, a, I think a 65 watt max TDP, which I don't know if I ordered like the CP motherboard combo, or I can't remember what I ordered at this point. You know, maybe we'll find out here in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the motherboard, we have a 960 GM E51, and I think this is a full-size case too. I didn't even really know the difference back then. I, I might have somewhat knew, but yeah, pretty decent board. It's not OEM, but it's also not like a super overclockable board or anything. For the CPU, we have the FX6300. So back in the day, this was supposed to be a six core, six thread, but really this was a three core, six thread, but it was very weak individual cores. So yeah, they kind of got in a lot of trouble for that. Now this is kind of another Another unknown, it might not be perfect, but we have this Rip Jaws RAM. Now this is eight gigs of DDR3. I definitely had two sticks. I remember wanting dual channel back then. You'll notice too, my case is not quite the right color, but I did have a red case. Originally I, I can only get orange. Yeah, weird color scheme going on. Cause I was so proud of this card for whatever reason, but this is a MSI Radeon HD 7770. And yeah, it's a mouthful. It's a one gig card. I think you could have gotten it in a 512 as well, but we have DVI, we have HDMI and display port. I think some of these did come with VGA, but yeah, pretty decent looking card. I remember the exact box too. I still have the boxes somewhere. It does actually require a external PCIe. So it's definitely, you know, an okay card. It's probably gonna be pretty bad now. This card probably is worse like a GT 1030, but I'm excited to try it out. So this is actually a Western Digital one terabyte blue drive. And it's funny because out of everything here, this is like the one thing that they still make and they're the exact same. Like you could buy one from 12 years ago and it'll still look like this. Um, these ones I do believe are used. I don't know if this has, these usually have a date on them somewhere. 2013. Oh wow, this pretty actually irrelevant. This actually pretty close back. So we we're both hard drive scrubs. I mean, SSDs were expensive back then. If you wanted a 128 gig, you were looking at a, over a dollar per gigabyte and that just didn't seem worth it to us back then. Now for the power <laughs> supply, we could not find the exact one that I definitely had. So this is a Raid Max RX 730 S However, I definitely did not have some fanciness of this. This is a semi-modular power supply. I did not have 730 watts. I think I maybe was pushing 430 if that. Back then, we really didn't care. It was like if I powered the build and it looked cool, blue fan, then it was good to go. This one might even be like 80 plus, and I know for a fact the one I had was not 80 plus nothing. This is a Raid Max Viper. And it, I think the exact model is like the Viper GX something, something, something. They do make a newer version of this, but I did not have the newer version. I had the very OG one that has a nice little baby dent there. I used to love this case. So I thought it was super cool. So you used to have this that opened and closed, which, you know, in all honesty, it looks cool. But like back then, you had to use stuff in the front. It's kind of ugly when you really yeah. think about it. Like, you know, nowadays you just have your ports cleanly up top or on the side or wherever. But I'm pretty sure this one has LEDs, but I don't remember There's what color. There's a fan right here on the acrylic. So I don't know if that has LEDs. I know for sure that they light up. I just don't remember what color the orange one be, but I had red and blue, which you can kind of see the scheme going on. You know, we had the red and the blue and everything, but yeah, wasn't a bad 
bad case at all. It was definitely a little bit more budget at the time, but I thought it was like the coolest case ever. So I'm excited to build it. All right, so it's my turn. And uh, the base of my system was Intel. So I had the i7-2600, which back in the day, that was pretty crazy. I remember it was like Black Friday and I remember going to my parents being like, hey, I want this i7 with motherboard and everything. And wow, this is the narrowest motherboard I've ever seen. <laughs> so the one board I had, I believe was the Z77 Extreme Pro 3. This is just the Pro 3, which is like the narrowest board I've ever seen. It's like Pathfinder. Um, so it's, yeah, it's built like Pathfinder. The one that I bought right here came with a CPU. It's the E3 1240V2, which I think is pretty much like an i7-2600 uh, locked. So you got that going for you. But I did have a K processor and I did do a little bit of overclocking. We'll talk about how I cooled it. But uh, yeah, i7-2600K. Make sure I actually got the K. Yep, i7 2600K. Look at this, it's well packaged and everything. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this processor, awesome. Four cores, eight threads. Four cores and eight threads was really crazy back then. The i7 was the top of the line back in 2012, 2013. I think I remember buying this when third and fourth gen were already out, or third gen was already out, and this was on sale. So you could pick these up at a good price. So really, really cool there. Speaking of cool, Hyper 212 Evo. This is the original ugly Hyper 212. This was really like the only cooler anyone ever recommended back in the day. The Hyper 212 wasn't the prettiest, is honestly a pain in the asked to actually install, but it kept everything cool and it was like 30 bucks, just how like it is nowadays, but it's more up to date and has like a black design and stuff like that. So still very cool there. In terms of storage, Jackson had my hard drive. Whoop. It's the same thing, you know, WD Blue. We actually ordered the same RAM and the same storage from the same seller because we kind of just had the same thing. G-Skill was really cool RAM. Uh, Western Digital was like the main hard drive uh, company that you went with. So we had that going there. My RAM is somewhere over here. You already saw it though. It's the same G-Skill RAM, so you can do that. In terms of the graphics card, this is where things get a little crazy. This is very nostalgic because this is the exact <laughs> model right here. The Radeon 6850. Now I remember I had like a 5670 when I first started out with an old Athlon CPU, but eventually it all got upgraded to this and the i7-2600, and that's when we really were making YouTube videos and stuff. One gig card, once again, six pin power. I think these cards are very similar, like the 7770 and this card are very similar, but the real benefit I had was the i7-2600. It definitely had a step up over the FX processors back in the day. Um, Intel was really on top back then. There really wasn't an AMD like there is now. It was really just Intel was the main thing to go with, and AMD was the budget offering. Yeah, it's kind of flip-flop nowadays, actually. Intel's more affordable right now. Kind of weird. But yeah, 6850 easily was able to play Minecraft, uh, Killing Floor, and all those games, no problem, 60 FPS. Um, and then to power the build, we actually have a Corsair power supply. Um, it was not a great Corsair power supply, but I remember getting this when I got the i7, and it's a CX500. The cables aren't pretty. There's actually probably gonna be some B-roll on screen of the video that's on the Toasty Bros channel where I showed you guys how to cable manage with this case and this power supply. You can see all the crazy cables and stuff. Definitely not the best guy in the world. Don't follow that guy, but it is out there. And uh, yeah, 500 watts was definitely plenty for the PC build. I remember I did like have my computer shut down on me once when I was trying to overclock with this CPU because I think this thing drew a lot of power, but who knows what I was even doing. I probably broke something. Now this, is the case. This case is the Half 912 from Cooler Master. I don't know why I chose this case. I really have no idea, because I remember after a while, I really wasn't a fan of it, but you know what, it is what it is. This one came all the way from Canada. It is a big case, and I did a lot of things with this case. Um, towards the end, I painted it orange, because that was Toasty Bros <laughs> theme colors. It was a really bad spray paint like job. orange and white. And I think that was on the Toasty Bros channel as well. There's probably a video of that. This Wait, there's a power supply in this? I didn't ask for a power supply. What? So I actually got a power Supply. I remember this case was really expensive on eBay. I think we paid almost like $200 after shipping. It was really ridiculous. It's like falling apart. But it is falling apart, but oh man, the half. high. Yep. Air, this is high airflow is what half stands for. And sure. I mean, compared to <laughs> nowadays, I wouldn't really think it's the highest of airflow, uh, but it's got that going for it at least. What power supply came with? Maybe it's better than the one that I bought for myself. I don't remember. It's probably not. It's probably something really junky, probably but bad. let's find out. It's a Cooler Master power supply. Oh, and Whoa. I forgot, look at that. I can't even see the power supply from this side. All right, so it's a, Ooh. wow, an X2 Extreme 275. Honestly, never seen it before, but I bet it's a pretty decent power yeah, supply. I assume 725 the watts, I think, yeah. if, if I'm right there, but that's not too bad. This kind of came out of shipping, but yeah, we're gonna have to take this apart and get oh, it, it out for now. came with the DVD freaking oh, I got a ride drive. You know what? $200, such a bargain. Yeah, that's my build. Again, it wasn't like crazy coordinated or anything either. I mean, I got a brown motherboard with <laughs> red RAM and uh, 2600. At that point, we really didn't care about looks all that much. It was just getting the best performance we could to play our games. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is build both of these PCs, come back and show you all the finished product.
So uh, we have an update on this project that we kind of expected would happen. Yeah, things have changed. So we knew that one of our computers would be bad. It would have some type of bad part in it, and we were correct. The one that we built for me ended up working pretty well, but this one, sadly, the board was kind of going in and out. We could get it work sometimes, sometimes we couldn't. Anytime we put it in the case, it just instantly didn't work, but we tried different risers. We tried different riser patterns. We tried, you know, lifting it a little bit out of the case, and it just, it was so hit or, hit or miss that we just decided to send the board back. We got a different board, but it's still the same, you know, board-esque that was there before, just different color and everything, a little bit different size. Uh, we got the same cooler and then we also swapped out the power supply because we were like hey while we're in there We should probably change out the power supply because the other fan was just going bad very quickly So we'll probably have will try to fix that in the back But for now we know we got a good power supply and a good new motherboard and it posted So now we can actually play some games from our childhood and have a good time on these PCs All right guys So we are starting off with a classic game that Matt and I spent a lot of hours in got to the max level This is killing floor one and as you can see, God, it like grayed really everything hard. out. Yeah. I don't know why. We're on basically like high settings, which I'm gonna be yeah. real. Game details on higher. I do not remember being able to play on like, you know, decent settings in this game, but I mean, actually, it looks pretty good. We're getting like 80 uh, to 100 FPS. We're playing on one of our OG favorite maps. This is Office. The sensitivity is so freaking high. Yo! That's how you play. You don't, you don't scope it in this game, you just run and <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Uh, yep. Boom! 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 Bam! Bam! Oh yeah. Stuck. Boom. There we go. Easy. This was a journey. He really had to run up here. <laughs> Dude, I'm like struggling. <laughs> He's got a flash. So you can scare him. God. Oh god, that grenade rolled back. Mm -hmm. You can just, you know, boom, 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 just like that. Easy peasy. Yeah, performance, as you can tell, was very similar. I mean, really can't complain too much. Even at 1080p nowadays, you're still getting 100 FPS. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a look at a different map and killing floor. And um, yeah, easy headshots, no problem. All right, guys, this is CS. <laughs> this is CSGO. Uh... And right now we are on like medium 1080p settings. Now, this is a game that I feel like back then, like I feel like I could play this on higher settings, but they actually still update this game. It's still one of the number one played games out there, so I guess why wouldn't they? Um, but because of that, sometimes these games are actually still kind of hard to run because they're actually like, still adding textures and stuff like that, and other just garbledy goop. Garbledy goop. That's <laughs> I mean, the best way I can put we're it. We're getting anywhere between 100 to like 80 FPS. So, wasn't a high refresh rate, but back in the day, all we were really using was 1080p 60 hertz monitors. And in my case, I think for the longest time, I was using like a 1600 by 900 monitor before 1080p, so. You know, yep. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh. yeah, bot bread. That that wasn't a one dig. All of it. Oh no! No! Oh, yeah. It's definitely fun to you know kind of live the nostalgia. Hey! Although I will say, you know, the nostalgia is really in the games. It's not really in the computer. Like, I mean, I look at the computer case and I'm like, oh yeah, that's dope. But I don't feel like I had like a super memorable case or anything. Like when we got it, the mail was like, oh, yeah, that's my old case. But I wasn't just like, oh man, that was such a good, like, if I had something like the Cosmos. Something like really. Yeah, epic. something that was like, like a, a statement piece back then. Then I probably would have felt more that way, but. Just a budget case. All right, guys, we are playing Team Fortress 2, which was definitely a very much played game by us. And I'm running my PC at uh, medium settings right now. Um, this game was a little bit easier to run than CSGO, and I don't feel like they've really updated like the, the textures and the menus as much. So I think this game kind of remains somewhat easier to run. But yeah, I mean, so far, looking pretty good. We're getting 140 FPS. See, like I never counted my FPS back then, so I really never even knew what I was getting. Yeah, their team's like empty, isn't it? Ah, TF2! <laughs> oh, oh, leave me alone, medic! Surprising amount of RAM, too, because I feel like, you know, we used to preach that, like, four was enough back in this era. TF2 is all we know. Ah, yes! We needed the turret. Sean was just talking about this. How much you can change, though. Thing. Bring it back, please. Oh, no, I didn't come by a turret. But yeah, TF2 runs great, and overall, obviously, these games are 
cool. You know, we played them when we were younger, and there are some of these games are still relevant. Obviously, CF2 and TF2 is a game you can definitely still play. But uh, yeah, this PC has held up. I don't think it'd be absolutely amazing for uh, higher end games, but you know what? Kind of cool to see what our old PCs can do. Let's wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we just got done benchmarking our childhood PCs. And I think they ran and performed about how we remember them. So, and we had a lot of fun doing this. So let us know in the comment section down below if you guys ever want to see anything else similar to this. And let us know as well what your first gaming PC you could remember was and what kind of games you all played. It was really cool and kind of a fun little experiment just to see exactly what we could find for replicating our PCs. And again, we got really close, not exact, but it is pretty cool to see these old cases that we used to use years ago. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toast bros and do not forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye so both of these gaming pcs right here will actually be for sale at pc bros so if you want to buy our og gaming pcs of course they will be a lot cheaper because you know we know they're not really worth what they used to be but make sure you check them out at pc bros no they're gonna be very expensive they're priceless this is me this is jackson we're gonna name them that on the website yep. and you have to buy us it's it's like a wayfair situation <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have multiple of them too like a big run it's gonna be amazing pc bros odd tech use good toes for two to save two percent see you guys later goodbye exactly.